Hello there, my name is Doug, and today we're going to talk about using the 3D printers we have available here in SparkPlace. In our space, you can see a few different 3D printer designs. All of our machines are FDM, or Fused Deposited Material Machines. This means that they melt their material into a liquid state before depositing it wherever told to do so. The machine here is a Prusa 3D i3 Mark III printer. This is going to be the machine that we follow and talk about during this video. The following steps can be followed for any of our machines, however a few things may differ slightly. To get started with 3D printing, you're going to need a 3D file. We suggest places like Thingiverse for finding your files, or Tinkercad for creating your own. Once you've found your file, we need to go ahead and open up Cura from the start bar. Cura is a slicing program which means its job is to take our 3D file and slice it into the information that the printer needs to run. In this program, we're going to set all the settings that are needed for success, not only for the machine, but for your print as well. If it is not loaded onto the taskbar at the bottom of the screen, you can find it under the start menu called Ultimaker Cura. Let's take a quick look around Cura and get ourselves familiar with it. We're going to be working in a semicircle around the page, starting at the top. The three options labeled here, under Prepare, Preview, and Monitor, are going to change the view of the bed visualizer you can see underneath quite a bit. Prepare is the default screen that will show you the bed and your model, once loaded, in relation to each other. It also has a function of showing where Cura thinks you will need support. The red areas of the model are what the program thinks will fail. These may not always be true, but it is worth noting. The Preview tab works to show you exactly what the printer is going to be told to do. Once your model is sliced, this tab shows you all of the layers with the little sliders over here on the bottom left of the screen. It also shows you more specific information if you change the dropdown in the right to Line Type. This view, you can actually see everything as different colors. These colors correspond with the type of line that they are, such as wall, infill, support, and so on. This view is the best thing to look at to make sure your file is properly supported and has all the details you need to see on it. In our space, we do not use the monitor tab, but should you have a 3D printer at home, you could connect the printer straight to your computer and use Cura itself to monitor your print while it is running. The next thing to note are the three axes that we will be following in this view. If you hold down your right mouse button and move around, you can see that you move all around the space. This means we are seeing in three-dimensional space. The forward left corner of the bed view has these three colored lines on it. Red is our X axes, or left to right. Green is Y axes, for front to back. And blue is the Z axes, for up and down. The next thing to note is, while in the Preview option, down the left side of the screen are some different model options that Cura provides. The top tab is a Move option to move your file around the print bed. The second button is a Size option to adjust the size of your piece. Rotation and Mirror are the next two buttons. And further than that, you won't ever need an hour space, but they are more specific settings you could use at home. Next, we're going to talk about the profiles used to print from Cura. The Cura loaded onto our computers has already set up a successful default profile for you to use if you've never run a 3D printer before. However, this is where we can really start to adjust settings to make our 3D print shine. A profile is a predefined set of settings, all of which are located down the right-hand side of the screen. They are small little drop-downs, so if you ever need to view one but cannot see it, try clicking the little arrow on the right bar side. Slicers like Cura work by taking our 3D model and slicing it into the individual layers that are defined by the settings we set. We like to use a draft profile here that starts with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. This means that each layer of the print is going to be 0.2 millimeters tall, or five layers per millimeter. Let's go ahead and slice our file by using the blue slice button in the bottom right. You can see that when I slice my model, a small boat affectionately known as Benchy, I get 240 layers. 
The lower you set your layer height, the more layers you will need, and therefore the higher detail you're able to accomplish in your 3D print. Next, we're going to talk about a very important setting, which is supports. For the most part, a 3D printer needs to be printing onto something to make sure that it can keep going successfully. Let's use this little piece here as an example. As you can see when printed in this layout, there are none of the red areas we talked about earlier except for at the bottom of the model. However, if I were to flip this model over, now you can see that there is a large part of the model that has turned red underneath. This area here is what Cura thinks would need supports. Because if the printer tried to do these layers without them, it would just be trying to deposit a liquid plastic into thin air. In the Supports tab, you should see a little checkbox like this one. Once checked, you can see some of the more specific settings. One of the first things we're going to do is called Support Structure. And inside that dropdown, there are two options of Normal and Tree. We like to use tree supports in the Spark Place because it ends up making your print take a little bit less time and less material. However, this is not always the best option. Tree supports work by coming to your piece and touching it in places with little branches that come off the main trunk, hence how they got their name. You shouldn't need to mess with many of the settings underneath the tree setting as they're part of the generic settings we already use. However, if your piece is failing, support settings might be the first thing you should start adjusting. Now, if you slice this file and look inside the preview tab, you can see that I have a little set of blue supports that seem to hug the top of the file with thin little lines. If you're not seeing a blue support color like I am, make sure over in your small window that you're seeing the line type option. Now, returning to my Benchy, we're not going to use supports here because we don't actually need them. The file is designed as a sort of test for 3D printers. There are different things that you can learn looking at what does or does not succeed on the Benchy. Sometimes you can get away with no supports at all on a file. Other times you may actually be able to find 3D files that are actually called supportless, designed so that the printer shouldn't need to support anything as it runs. There are a few other settings that are created in our draft profile that we're not going to worry about talking about here, but just know that things like your material's printing temperature, the bed temperature, and a few other small temperature related things are possible to be adjusted here in Cura. The last thing we're going to talk about is bed adhesion, also known as build plate adhesion on the settings tabs. These are settings used to make sure your 3D print stays in place on the build plate while the printer is moving around it. A print must adhere to the bed if it's going to stay in place, and these settings act in various ways to adhere your print down if they are set properly. If your piece was to move, you could get something as small as a layer shift or all the way to a full print failure. There are a couple of different options we can do here, so let's cover them all individually. You can always set these settings to none, but the changes in print time or material used are normally minimal compared to the increase in the chance of your piece succeeding. The most common build plate adhesion is called a skirt. A skirt is a set of normally one to three lines around the outermost perimeter of your 3D file. A skirt is used to make sure that your filament is properly primed and running smoothly out of the machine's hot end. However, it does not provide any mechanical adhesion to your print. Should the bottom of your print come loose, this will still cause it to fail. The second option, and the one that we normally recommend, is called a brim. A brim is a lot like a skirt in many ways, as it is a set of lines that wrap around the outermost perimeter of your 3D file. Unlike a skirt, however, the brim comes all the way up and touches the edge of your 3D print. This means that when your file is done and you pick it up off the bed, there will be a little bit of extra plastic that you can easily cut or pull off the bottom of your piece. These are a lot of times used, almost like hands, that help hold the piece down to the print bed. They extend a small distance away and increase the total amount of surface area of your print to the print bed. That extra surface area will help keep your piece sort of held in place on the print bed and help prevent small movements that can fail the piece. Should there be a little bit of your print that comes loose from the bed, a lot of times a brim will be strong enough to keep holding your piece in place. The final option we'll talk about here today is called a raft. A raft is almost exactly what its name suggests, and it does create a solid piece of plastic from underneath so your 3D print can rest on it. 
There are normally at least a couple layers, and they act a lot like a brim in most cases. They extend a certain distance from underneath, and you normally set a generalized shape to make sure it's easy to remove later on. However, the raft differs from the brim as your file is actually no longer touching the build plate. Instead, it is sitting on the raft made of plastic. Being plastic on plastic, you may see a higher success chance for a file that has a small surface area on the bottom due to the fact that the plastic would rather stick to itself than the build plate. However, a raft can become too well adhered and could affect the bottom of your piece by attaching more permanently to it. Each of these options give you a various amount of help or information, and which one you choose is up to you. As stated, we suggest the brim a lot to save time and a little bit of plastic, however if you'd like to use a different option, you can. With that set up, we are officially ready to go ahead and get our print saved into the proper format and get it ready to be loaded onto the printer. First, once the slice button is clicked, you'll notice that it changes into a new button that says save to file or save to removable drive if you have a flash drive plugged into the laptop. Once clicked, you can treat this exactly like any other save window you've seen before. You can name your file, or just leave it as it is, and note its current name. This file you just made should be a .gcode file, and should have a Cura logo right in front of it. We're now going to quickly go over the steps needed to load the filament onto the machine for your print. Following the settings you chose, please make sure you grab a spool of the correct filament. In most cases, this will be PLA. Once you have your spool, on top of the enclosures for the printers, there are a set of blue wheels that we're going to set the outside black plastic edge of our spool onto. We recommend working in a sort of back to forward motion, setting the farthest away edge first so you can sort of look underneath it and see the forward edge to make sure that you are lined up. If you need, you can move these small wheels around, just make sure that you can set the edges onto them. Once you have the roll set onto these bearings, you can feed a freshly cut tip right through the hole in the top of the enclosure. When we say freshly cut tip, what we're talking about is using a pair of flush cutters to clean the old edge with a nice 45 degree cut. This cut makes it easier to feed the filament not only through the enclosure hole, but into the machine itself. Once you're through the enclosure, you can open the doors and pull down through the hole and gently place the tip of the filament into the top of the extruder. You should hear a small beep and see the screen on the front of the machine change. This new screen should have options for what type of material you are attempting to load. Using the small dial button on the front of the machine, please rotate it until the arrow is in front of the material you are using and push on the dial itself to select it. This will start heating the machine up for us and even load the material in as long as the filament is held far enough in place once placed inside. With the machine heating up and getting started, let's finish up by setting up our G-code in Octoprint. Each of our 3D printers have their own dedicated Octoprint, which is just a web-based printer controlling system. Open Google Chrome, and across the top bookmark bar, you should see four different bookmarks, each labeled as Octoprint with a number that corresponds to the machine that they connect to. Click only the Octoprint number that you will be using and wait for the page to load. Occasionally, you may see an error about connection pop up. These are relatively common, and you'll just need to wait a moment before refreshing the page. Once the screen loads, you should see something like this. There are various windows around this page that we're going to be looking at. And if you ever get lost from where I am, please note that I'll be explaining where around the page to look before I say the window's name. The next thing to remember is that if the name of the window is blue, that means it is a clickable link that can be collapsed. If you cannot find a window I'm talking about, check and see if you can find its name somewhere and make sure it's not just collapsed. Starting in the top left of the screen, we'll be looking at the connection window. This may be a little closed tab if the printer is already connected, but if it's open and you see a button that says connect, we should click that first. Once connected, the next thing to look for is a large set of tabs on the upper right hand side of the screen, starting with temperature. From the temperature tab, you should see a large graph taking up most of the screen. 
This graph is going to keep a real-time chart of the temperatures for both your hot end and the heated bed on the machine. The next thing we're going to look at is the bottom left-hand side of the page for a window labeled Files. This window is what loads our G-codes onto the Octoprint to run the printer. There should be a blue Upload button at the bottom of the window, and using this we're going to upload the G-code we just saved out of Cura. Once you have all of these steps done, it is as easy as clicking on the little printer icon next to your file to get it running on the machine. And that's it. Our file is now running on our 3D printer, and we ask that you watch at least the first couple of layers to make sure it looks like it's adhering to the bed before you leave our space. We know this is a long process, and we recommend watching this video a couple of times, if needed, to make sure that you understand each step. While we watch my Benchy print, I'm going to go over all the things we covered today. We started with talking about where to find your files or create them, from there, we talked about Cura and some of its settings, like layers, supports, or being connected to the bed. After that, we spoke quickly about getting the machine loaded, which the printer does pretty easily for us. And then finally, we talked a little bit about Octoprint and how to use it in the space. After watching this video, please note that if you ever have any questions about 3D printing or anything else in our space, you are more than welcome to give us a call. We hope this video was helpful, and that it got you started on your 3D printing adventure. We hope to see you soon, and until then, have a good day.